you just started identifying as female two weeks ago. I'm not here to talk about my transition. <laughs> I'm here to kick some f***ing ass. <laughs> it's still funny, but now it's not satire. Now it's reality. <laughs> This weightlifter, who goes by the name Laurel Hubbard, I don't know his real name, but he's now going by the name Laurel, he will become <laughs> the first transgender athlete to compete at the Olympics after being selected by New Zealand for the women's event at the Tokyo Games. Uh, this is a decision about the fairness and the inclusion. This fella is a, a big, burly dude, okay, and he's going to compete against very fit women, but he is going to be bigger and burlier than they are because he's a man and men are bigger and stronger than women. And I suspect none of those things that I've just said are permitted any longer. I may be able to stay on social media, but I certainly wouldn't be allowed to say such a thing at a cocktail party or in a corporate HR room or in the halls of government or in a public school. We're not really allowed to say these plain facts anymore, but it is insane that a big burly dude is going to engage in a weightlifting competition next to women and he's going to do very, very well. And we're all supposed to pretend that this is a wonderful, shocking, historic thing. South Park mocked this idea just two years ago. This was a punchline on South Park just two years ago. Joining me now is the current champion of the strong woman competition, strong woman. Miss woman, do you feel ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready, David. There are just so many amazing women athletes out here today. It makes me so proud. Now, this is the first year that a trans woman is in the competition. How do you feel about that? Amazing. I feel honored to be a part of history. I have a lot of incredible trans friends who are athletes, and so we're all inspired this woman's competing. Uh-huh. And uh, have you actually ever met Heather Swanson? Uh, no, I've never competed against her before, no. She's not exactly your average trans athlete. Well, what is an average trans athlete? Honestly, I find that kind of bigoted, David. Okay. Heather Swanson is actually joining us now. Miss Swanson, how does it feel to be competing today? <laughs> I can't tell you how free I feel now that I've started identifying as a woman. Now that I can compete as female, I'm ready to smash the other girls. <laughs> and is it correct you just started identifying as female two weeks ago? I'm not here to talk about my transition. I'm here to kick some f***ing ass. <laughs> Sir, it's still funny, right? It's still funny, but now it's not satire. Now it's reality. <laughs> that is happening. And it's not just at some random competition in the middle of nowhere. That is happening at the Olympics now. That guy, maybe without the beard, is, but this giant, burly dude with big muscles is going to be competing against a woman. And we're all going to have to pretend that that's totally normal and fine and good, actually. And then when he does very, very well at the competition, uh, we all have to pretend that that's an amazing historic thing. Sometimes you will hear from the left that no, there is no evidence that trans women do any better or have any unfair advantage against real women. They wouldn't call them real women. They'd say it's just another variety of woman. That is just fake. There was a, a random Twitter account called Rip X for Nutmeg <laughs> that posted a little thread on this last night. Just, and this is just a handful. We do, we do not have time to go through all of the examples. Uh, 1998 to 2012, Laurel Hubbard, that guy who's now going to be at the Olympics, failed to qualify for a single international men's tournament as a professional weightlifter. 2013, Hubbard transitions, quote unquote, at age 35. And from 2014 to 2021, Hubbard qualifies for 11 international women's tournaments, including the Olympics. I think he got an advantage. I don't know. I'm no expert. 2017, CC Telfer is ranked 390th among male NCAA Division II athletes in the 400 meter hurdles. Uh, in 2018, Telfer transitions to pretend to be a woman. 2019, Telfer is a national NCAA Division II women's 400 hurdle champion. 2021, Telfer hopes to qualify for the Olympics. 2013 to 2015, ha Hannah Mouncey made 22 appearances for the Australian men's handball team, scoring zero goals. 2015, Mouncey transitions in 2018. Amid controversy, Mouncey is allowed to play six times for the Australian women's handball team, scoring 23 goals. Huh. Well, I think he might have, I think Hannah may have gotten a little advantage there, maybe from his 
physique and his biochemistry. Before 2015, golfer Haley Davidson won zero men's tournaments. Doesn't even look like he qualified for any tournaments. 2015, he transitions. 2021, Davidson becomes the first male to win a women's professional golf tournament. 2019, Mary Gregory, Mary, who had transitioned as an adult, takes up, just takes it up, professional women's weightlifting, and at his first tournament, won all nine events at the 100% Raw Weightlifting Federation competition and broke four world records in the process. Just kind of took it up one day, but you know, she transitioned, so it's totally totally kosher. Uh, You all remember Fallon Fox before 2006. Fallon Fox was in the U.S. Navy. He's a dude. Then he transitioned. And then from 2012 to 2014, he becomes an MMA fighter. He won all but one of his fights. And in one fight, he cracked, cracked a woman's skull open. The list goes on. I mean, I have so many more examples of this here. Do not let them tell you that there is no evidence. There's never been an example of a trans woman having an advantage over another woman, over a cisgendered woman. It's just not true. They obviously have a built-in advantage. They win or come very close to winning almost every time under some extremely extenuating circumstances. Like like some, some, some of these guys will take up the sport way late, but they'll still do better than the women. Why? Because they're bigger and stronger. Hey, stop right there. I'm glad you liked the video. There's a whole episode. Go watch it right now. You can watch it on YouTube. It's called Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. You can also listen at Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, You can subscribe there, leave a five-star review, ring the bell, subscribe here. And speaking of controlling words, controlling minds, you can order, not pre-order, but order my book. It was just released today. Speechless, controlling words, controlling minds. Go order it. See you next time.